I want to turn you to John 15, um, and we're going to read uh, two or three verses there. John chapter 15, verse 13, reads like this. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And so even from this movie, we saw not just love, but we saw friendship, we saw sacrifice, and um, the Bible speaks about this. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, Jesus says, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. How good it is to be a friend of God. For all things that I heard from my father, Jesus said, I have made known to you. This um, morning, well, it's afternoon already, I want to speak to you uh, very briefly in the remaining time that we have about love. This is a scripture uh, that I would like us to read and uh, I would like to pick out uh, some truths from the Word of God found uh, in these verses. 1 John 4, 7 to 11 is good for us to read the Word of God. Uh, it says here in 1 John 4, chapter 4, verses 7 to 11, Beloved, beloved, let us who love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him, that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. We are talking about the definition of love. And Jesus said, a, a greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Now, today I'm not here to talk about uh, equal or equality or, or same-sex marriage. I'm not here to talk. I, I'm sure there'll be another time where we can talk about it and, and, and share and dialogue. Uh, but for today, I think being Resurrection Sunday, uh, it's good to talk about love. God is love, but love is not God. And explain it to you. You've got to worship God and you must not worship love. So again, God is love, so you worship God. But love is not God. Love is not God. I can say it another way. God is good. You agree? But good is not God. You worship God who is good, but you don't worship what is good. That's why a lot of people like to do good works and think that they will make it to heaven. But if you think that you, can, you do good works and make it to heaven, then you're worshipping good. Yeah. No, you've got to worship God. Say what He says. Do what He tells you to do. Yeah. Yes, good works are important, but good works, no matter how good, is not God. Yeah. So don't worship good. Yeah. But too many people do that. They think just because of good works, they'll go to heaven. But that's far from the truth. Who gives the definition to love? God does. See, love won't even exist uh, if there was no God. Because of God, uh, He made us so that He can love us. He created us so that we can love Him. Love is not a jalan sahala. It's not a one-way street. Love is a two-way street. God created us to love Him. But He first loved us. Amen. So without God, there is no love. You say, no, I can still love without God. See, this is how I think it is for some of us. Maybe not some of us in this room, but some of us in this world. We take God out of the equation. It, it, it seems like, you know, all of you have been there for Christmas. You've celebrated. You've got gifts. You've got presents. Some of you get really, really um, expensive presents. And uh, sometimes with uh, the fact that it's expensive, it could be also complicated. Now, it's like this, it's like this. Love is like that gift. Love, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is so powerful. No? It's so powerful. Some people think drugs are powerful. Wow. Drugs can kill you, right? Yeah. 
But have you ever seen a drug addict restored, transform? You know what restored and transform him or her? Love. So more powerful than drugs and more powerful than the spirit of gambling is love. So love really is the most powerful force on the face of the earth. Love is very powerful, guys. Love triumphs hate. Love triumphs over all kinds of problems. Love. God is love. Seated on the throne in heaven, one day you all and I will see that person, that power, you know, that amazing energy, <laughs> that person called Jesus. One day we'll see, we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We will see love. Love is exalted. Jesus is glorified. God is love. But then what happened is we, in this world, have received this amazing, expensive, somewhat complicated, very powerful gift called love. And then we open the gift and then we go like, oh, I think I can work it out myself. But the gift without the giver is not going to be fully utilized. Because you and I don't really know how to work this out. We open the gift, and some of us have this happened to us before, and we go like, uh, what is it? Uh? It, it looks nice, it looks expensive, but how do you work it? Uh? You, you see, even my action, my very action, you've got to turn to somebody to ask. But the world has chosen to take the gift and reject the giver. So they say love is love, but they, they can't and they shouldn't say that because it should be God is love. And without God, I don't really know how to define this. I really, I really don't even know how to feel. I don't even know how, how do you really use this? And some of us only use, right, a bit of it because we only know how to work the surface of it. But yet, you know, and some of you know this, right, because you've got machineries in your home that actually, uh, when the expert comes, he can tell you, oh, this, can grill, can this, can that. Can, wow, I never knew. I thought only microwave can heat up food only. And, and all your life, you've just be, you've been using that microwave to only heat up food. And someone comes into your car and says, hey, do you know that, do you know that, do you know that this one can connect with the satellite, no? This one can speak to aliens, one. This, this one, no, uh, this one can, you know, this one can press and then can fly. And then you go like, huh? I never knew. Because there's so much more, amen. And without... The God who gave the gift, the giver, you and I will really never know what love truly is. Love is in the context of God. The two cannot be separated. The two cannot be separated. Let me read to you the word of God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Do you see that almost every line had both love and God in the same breath? You cannot separate them. And as soon as you try to separate them and take only the gift without the giver, ladies and gentlemen, we are bound to get in trouble. Because we start defining according to ourselves. We start thinking maybe this will work and maybe it should work this way. And sometimes such a powerful gift uh, can either be for good or for bad. When you, when you deal with something so powerful, it can either build or it can break. Are you also with me? Yeah. It can either develop something great or destroy. Because such power is in your hands. It's too powerful. This, this thing called love is too powerful to be in the hands of a human being without the help of God. God wants to come and help us be able to live out this gift called love. Are all still with me? Yeah. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Love is a command. Why? Because it is a character of God. Love is a command 
because it is a character of God. We are commanded to do so because God is like that. Everybody with me? Because God is like that, therefore the command is for us to be like Him. Love one another because love is of God. So love is a command. 1 John 5, 3. 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. Let's move on. Love is knowledge. Love is knowledge. Everyone who loves, says the Bible, is born of God and knows God, knows God. So it's not just knowledge, it's knowledge of God. Love, I say number one, is in the context of God. Love is of God. Secondly, I'm saying love is knowledge, but just not, just not knowledge. A lot of people out there will say, love is love, and I have knowledge that love is love. And it's, not, it's not just knowledge, it's knowledge of God. Love is knowledge, but knowledge of the one who made love. So, everyone who, is, who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, I'm referring back to the same scripture we read earlier. I'm taking everything from there. 1 John 4, 7 to 11. If we do not love, it says in the Bible, we do not know God. So love is knowledge and knowledge of God. Uh, guys, I'm just saying to you, if you can't catch everything I'm saying, I just know this. Everything about love connects back to God. The love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world. So what did God do? He didn't just talk from heaven. He sent His Son. Because love is not just talk. Love is walk. And love is God sending His only begotten Son. The next point I want to give you is that love is purpose. Many times people will say love is this, love is that. But what's the purpose of love? There must be purpose in love. And the purpose of God sending His only begotten Son is again listed very clearly in the scripture we read earlier that we might live through Him. That we might live through Him. So true love brings life. That's the purpose of true love. When we say we love somebody but bring death, that's not love. When we hurt somebody and we say we love them, that's not love. When we beat somebody up and say, I love you, I, you know, I love you and I, you know, this is the way I show love. Love is painful. You know, truth is painful too. But hey, listen to me. This is, this is very important. L- love brings life. L- love brings life that we might live through Him. Why did the Son of God come? That we might live. Before that, we were dead. We were dead in our sins. We were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in our selfishness. We were dead in our, you know, pursuits for other gods. The God of money, the God of beauty, the God of power. We were in pursuit of other gods and then we found the God of love. God is love. And when we found God, we found true love. And we were able to love God and we were able to love ourselves and we were able to love others around us. It was not our own strength that we loved from. It was from God's strength that we loved. Amen? Amen. So the purpose is to bring life. Love is divine is the next point. Quickly, quickly now. Love is divine. What do I mean by that? It started from God. You see, he says here, in this is love. 1 John 4, 7 to 11. In this is love, not that we loved God. So he's saying to you, not that you started loving God. The love did not start from you. So he's saying, not that we lo- In this is love. What is love? How is love? Where is love? In this is love, not that we loved God. So please don't start from the human love. Don't start from the human understanding of love. Don't start from what you think love is. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. Means the starting point of love and the definition of love should be from God to us. This is so important, people. You got to understand that. Oh, you got to not just understand it, but receive it. 
Because God is love and He loved us with all His heart, giving us only His best, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. that It doesn't depend on me because there are days, guys, like you, I can't love. Second last point. Love is sacrifice. It is for the good of others. You can never say, I sacrifice and then you benefited. Oh, I worked so hard, you know, and got all this money. Well, good on you. That's hard work. Don't call it sacrifice. You sacrifice and somebody else gets blessed. You sacrifice and somebody else gets healed. You sacrifice and somebody else gets their bills paid. That's a real sacrifice. And Jesus did not have to die for his own sins because he had no sin. He paid a price he did not owe because we owed a price we could not pay. It was for us. So love is divine and love is sacrificial. Finally, love is a response. It says towards the end of that uh, scripture we read, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So love is a response. It's a response to God's love. But you see, friends, I started by saying love is a command. But we cannot obey this command if we do not yet receive God's love. So it's actually a response, you know, guys. The command, actually, the first thing I said to you and the last thing I'm saying to you now is actually in one sentence. You can only obey the command if you are responding to something. It's not just obedience, it's actually a response because God now so loves you and you are so filled and flowing with God's love, how can you not love others? It's actually a natural flow. It's actually a response. But many people don't know how to respond because they haven't yet received. Love has won, but there is still work to be done. Let me, let me show you one other love has won uh, slide. I want to show you love has won slide. Uh, and it says, death has lost uh, and, 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 and love has won. Uh, I want to show you, th now this is true. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, now, whatever article you saw earlier, even the last article that you saw, it says love has won, but we still have work to do. I thank God that when Christ says that love has won, there is no more work to be done as far as salvation is concerned. The death, Friday, is gone. Love has won. Sunday has come. And then you know how to live Monday. You just let the love of God live through you. Yeah, yeah, say that, right? I think it's better to live for other people. I think it feels good to pay other people's debts because my debt has been paid for. To forgive others because I have been forgiven. To love others because I have been loved. Are you all with me? It gives you a lot of purpose no? and meaning. Friday, Sunday, Monday. Many people sometimes leave a love is love campaign and go like, I'm not sure what to do on Monday <laughs> because it's just me and my partner. But what else and where else and how else do we live our lives to change this world to be a better place? Not sure. Maybe they are sure. If you ask them, probably they will have an answer. But I'm thinking that living... God's love is to live for others, to live sacrificially, to live with purpose, to live bringing life to all those around us. Friday has gone, Sunday has come, and Monday will start. How will we live our lives? Will we live it by the love that we define for ourselves or will we live it by the, by the love that God defines? Will we continue to operate this gift that we've been given in absence of God or with God's help? Because only God knows how to handle love because He made it. He defines it. And He is the source of it all. This morning, or rather this afternoon now, uh, how we end this message and how we end this Sunday is to stand up and to lift up our hands and just say, yes, Lord. I say yes, first of all, to you. 
I, I don't say yes to love first. I say yes to God first. I say yes to the giver of love, to the God of love. Let me stand up and say, I say yes to this God who knows what love is all about and can show me what love because He gave His everything to me. He really knows what pain is. This God really knows what separation is because He had to be separated from His Son. He could not look on sin and he turned His face away. This Jesus that knows what it means to be separated because of love, what it means to be hung on a cross, not for your debt, for other people's debt, because of love. It was not the nails that hung Him there. No, no. You know, Jesus said, I could call 12 legions of angels to come and help me now. 12 legions is 12,000 angels. Don't you think I can help myself? If I didn't want to go to the cross, I don't have to. I can call angels to come and help me now. But no, love sent Jesus to the cross. The nails were small, small nails compared to His big love. He paid the price for us because of love. Say yes to God. That's what I want you to do before we close. And when you say yes to God, let's put up uh, that, that slide. When you say yes to God, you're saying yes to love. You're saying yes to be loved by God. That is so important this afternoon. Some people here don't really know the love of God. You're saying as you're standing and putting up your hands up, I say yes to you, God. I say yes to your love. I say yes to be loved by you because I can't love you first because if I don't receive your love, if I don't know your love, I can never love like you want me to love. And so, Lord, I say yes first to you. I say yes to your love. I say yes to be loved by you. I want to receive your love. I pray that your love will fill my heart. I pray that your love will fill my mind. Take away every hurt. Take away every pain. Take away every anger. Take away every bitterness.